We're going to first look at the derivation, the construct and the types of candlesticks and the patterns that they form. We're then going to look at patterns in specifics, um, different types of patterns, where we see them on charts. We'll briefly look at the importance of time frames on your chart and lastly we'll look at some candlestick patterns on some charts. Now before we look at candlesticks in the main, what we're looking at here is a line chart and this line chart is basically showing the close of the price on a day-to-day -day basis. It's giving us information in terms of trend and in terms of market movement but it's not really telling us that much information about what's happened on, during the day. All we can see is where the market closed at the end of a particular day. Here we have a bar chart. Now this is a bit more informative. In the bar chart you can see a vertical line with two horizontal lines either side of it. And basically what it's giving us is information on the open, the range and the close of any particular day's trading. If we look at that in comparison with a line chart you can see that although we can have the trend being shown to us there, we also can see See what act, sort of activity has gone on during the, that any particular trading day. Lastly, the candlestick. Now, the candlestick chart shows us the similar information to the bar chart, but arguably it is more visual and gives more instant uh, information to be read from the chart. If we look at it in comparison with a bar chart, you can see that the information is very much the same, but I would argue that the candlestick perhaps gives us a little bit more visual stimulus as to where the market is being uh, in a uptrend and a downtrend, whether we've had up days or down days. And bar chart, on the other hand, does give us that same information, but you need to interrogate each bar in a more scrutinizing way. Now, there's nothing wrong with the bar chart. It's the forerunner to the candlestick chart, but as time moves on, the bar chart is becoming less uh, favorable. As new traders come in to the market, they're learning about trading with candlesticks. So candlestick patterns. Now there are many types of candlestick. Renko, Heikenashi, Equi Volume, Candle Volume, but we're going to be concerning ourselves with the Japanese candlestick. Now the credit given mainly to a trader by the name of Steve Neeson basically introduced the Japanese candlestick method to the West from Japan. So the construct of a candlestick. We're only going to concern ourselves now with Japanese candlestick. So the candle has an opening level. It will trade and create a low. It will also trade up and create a high. And at the end of the specific time period, it will form a close. And the candle itself is only valid when it is completely formed. If you look at this particular candle, when the market opened, it was at a certain level. It then moved down, likely forming a solid bar. Then it moved back up again, it went right to its high price, and then closed further back down into the candle range. Lines between the high and the close and the line vertical line between the open and the low are known as the candlestick shadow, tail or wick and the rectangular shape between the close and the open of the candlestick is known as the body. So here we have the open, high, low and close of a candle. Now the longer the body, the further the price has moved in the particular time period. Well that kind of makes sense because the distance between the high and the low determines the range of the market within that time period. So the longer the body, the further the price has moved during the time period. This also gives an indication as to momentum uh, is increasing and moving price in a particular direction. So the long wicks or tails or shadows, they indicate a shift in control between buyers and sellers during the time period that the candle was forming. So buyers and sellers have come in from the open of the bar they've pushed the market up, they've pushed the market down and buyers have come back in and pushed the market back up again to the close. We can use uh, the candlestick to help us identify market sentiment by comparing a current candle with adjacent candlestick. We'll see more on that later. Point to note, as I've already said, only closed and formed candles are worthy of analysis. The sentiment changes as the candlestick is forming. To use a candlestick effectively, we need to use it in conjunction with our chart analysis and the current price action. Now, candlestick patterns are time specific. They can be used on 5 minute, 15, 4 hour or 2 day charts. The candle forms within a particular time period. So a 5 minute chart, the candle is only valid every 5 minutes. Likewise on a 4 hour chart, a candle is only becomes valid every 4 hours. 
you need to bear in mind that candlestick is printing historical information it's only printing what is actually traded what has been happening in the market in terms of buyers and sellers and the market sentiment basically gives us an indication as to the bias whether the market was biased towards a buyer or a seller multiple candlesticks well they help to define market structure they also indicate changes in the momentum and they form recognized patterns which we can learn and help us to decide where we're going to get in and out of the market there are two main types of recognized patterns that are reversal patterns and continuation patterns and they also define key levels key levels on a chart will either be support and resistance or points of inflection that is where the market is turning so let's have a look at a couple of candlestick patterns here we have a bullish candle you'll notice now that the body has been colored in the common color used in candlestick patterns is green for a bullish candle the candle has an open a low a high and a close now the bullish candle indicates that during the time period of the formation of that candle is opened and closed higher than it opened which gives a suggestion that buyers have control at that particular point conversely a bearish candle in this case is colored red again the candle has an open a high a low and a close and during the formation of this candle is opened at a certain level and closed at a lower price than the opening level and this again suggests to us that sellers have control at the formation of that candle so let's have a look at some pattern we have a bullish pin bar and a bullish pin bar basically closes higher than the open and it has a long tail going in the opposing direction to where it closed so here you can see a candle that's opened it's pushed down and bear in mind at this point the candle was red as it was pushing down then it came back pushed through the open pushed up and closed on its high you will often see the close and the high of the bullish pin bar are the same but you can also have a small push up into a high and pulling back to the close the bearish pin bar conversely is opening at a level pushing up initially and again this would have been a green candle at the initial stages it then pushed back down through the open all the way down to the low and closed on the low likewise with this candle you can have a small push down below the the close printing a low and coming back up to close the doji candlestick pattern basically it has a very small body i.e the open and the close very close together or they can be exactly the same level the candle prints a high and a low informing the candle but then closes more or less where it opened and this suggests a point of indecision in the market neither the bulls nor the bears have control in the market now there are many variations of the doji i uh, will show you two here one is a gravestone doji here we have the candle has pushed up into upper high come back down and close more or less where it opened but the gravestone doji you will see is at the top of price action the single lines either side of that which will be used from here on in are just indicating candles of any form that have printed before and after the actual candle pattern we're discussing here we have a dragonfly doji again you'll see that at the bottom of the market a point of support or a point of inflection where the market is turning and the dragonfly doji opens and closes at the more or less the same level and has a tail that pushes down and it, the market then rejects when buyers come in and push the market back up again shooting star very similar to one of the previous candles but in this case the, the body is more defined and the shooting star you'll see at the top uh, at a point of resistance or a, a point of inflection where the market is turning similarly a level of resistance in the market there's a candle called the hanging man you'll see that the tail in this case is inverted where the market has pushed down buyers have come in pushed the market back up again and in this case the close is below the open in the shooting star scenario on the left the market has pushed up been rejected sellers have come in pushed the market back down and in this case the market has closed higher than the open on the downside or the lower side of the market we have what's called a hammer pushing down buyers come in push the market back up to close forming a small body and similarly the inverted hammer where the market has brought in buyers been, been pushed back down by sellers and closed near to the open but forming a small body now in all cases with these four examples the actual color of the body is not really that important some more reversal patterns 
the bullish engulfing pattern. The important point to note here is the setup candle, the first one, in this case colored red, forms the signal candle, then forms the body of the candle completely engulfs the preceding candle. The bearish engulfing candle at the higher levels on the market is where the market pushes up, prints the green candle, it then pushes up higher again but the market rejects, sellers come in and push the market back down again. And again you'll see here that the open and close of the engulfing candle is above and below the open and close of the prior candle. Now piercing pattern is where the signal candle tries to engulf the prior candle but doesn't quite succeed. However, the setup candle, in this case the red one, forms at the lower end of, a, of the market. The next candle then gaps down, the open is below the close of the previous candle. Buyers are coming in and they push up into the body of the previous candle. Now the rule of thumb here is that if that second candle, the piercing candle, moves more than 50% into the body of the prior candle, then we have a good piercing pattern. And on the upside, where the market is rejecting at a level of resistance, this uh, is also a piercing pattern, but in Japanese uh, candlestick terms, is called dark cloud cover. And what's happening here is the market has pushed up, forms the green candle. We then get a gap up. The market pushes gaps up uh, to form its open, pushes up higher. Then sellers come in, push the market back down, and it closes beyond 50% of the body of the preceding candle the bullish harami. Now this may look similar to the engulfing pattern, but in this case what we have is a setup candle forms, in this case the red candle, but the subsequent candle gaps up in this case, the close of the red is below the open of the green candle. It gaps up, buyers come in and it pushes up, but stays within the body of the preceding candle. The bearish harami, on the other hand, you'll see at the higher levels of the market, bullish candle prints, then the second candle comes in, opens gaps down. In this case, it's showing a tail that almost pushes up to the close of the previous candle. Market then pushes down, sellers come in, and the market closes lower than it's open, but within the bounds of the setup candle. Now in this case, it doesn't really matter with the second candle whether they're a red or a green candle. Here we have a three candle pattern set up. This one is known as a morning star. Now the key here with the morning star, we have a bullish three candle reversal pattern. The first candle will be red, bearish. Then the market will gap down to the second candle body. And that candle body can be of either color. In this case, we're showing it as green. And then the third candle also will have a green real body, ideally gapping up from, this, from the star candle which is the second candle. So we have a move down, then we have a further gap down, then we have a gap up forming the third candle. Now you will probably only see these on daily, weekly and monthly charts. Conversely the evening star is a bearish three candle reversal pattern. The first candle is bullish and has got a, a, a longer green body. The market will then gap up to the second small body. In this case we're showing a green doji candle and this doji candle can be either color. Then the third candle forms and this will be a red bearish candle and it will ideally be gapping down below the close of the evening star candle that's formed. The second candle in the three candle pattern can be green or red. Now lastly with the evening star, these are more frequent on the daily, weekly and monthly chart. The last of the reversal patterns we're going to look at is what's called a tweezer top, sometimes also referred to as tram lines, where two candles are printed almost or exactly the same highs. In effect, what we're looking at is the market printing a high, then printing the same high again and rejecting and then subsequently falling off. And the tweezer bottom, where we have a bullish pattern here, is showing support. The market is pushed down, rejected on the red candle and closed. Then subsequently the market has opened lower and tested the low again. Buyers have come in and there we have a tweezer bottom. Likewise, with the tweezer top and tweezer bottom, the candles can be either colour in each case. So let's have a look at a few continuation patterns. This is where a signal pattern is printed and the market continues in the direction to which it was trading. 
here we have what's called an up gap tazuki. Now the up gap tazuki is a two candle pattern. The up trend gaps up to a green candle. It is then followed by a rejection uh, with a red candle and that red candle opening the inside the body of the prior candle and it closes below the real body of the green. The market then subsequently gaps up and continues in an upward direction. Here we have a down gap Tsuki. Now again, the down gap Tsuki is a bearish two candle continuation pattern. The downtrend in this case gaps down to a red candle, followed by the green candle, which is pushing the market back up again. And the points to note here is, is that the, the green candle opens inside and closes above the red candle's real body. The last of the two continuation patterns we're going to look at is what's called the falling three. Here we have the market is trending downwards. We print a long bearish candle, which is then followed by three smaller candles pushing the market back up. Now those three candles I've shown as green there, but as long as they are showing a reversal they can be of either color. After those three candles are printed the market then rejects that recovery and the bears come back in and push the market down. Conversely, we have the rising three, where we're, the market is in an uptrend. A green candle is printed, where the, the bulls are buying into the market, pushing it up. Then the sellers come in, try to push the market back down. And again here, all three candles are contained within that initial bullish candle. Now, after that third candle is printed, the bulls then come back in with a more concerted push. This time, the close of the bullish candle is above the close of the initial bullish candle, and the market continues in its uptrend. So let's have a look at some charts. Here you can see an example of a morning star. Here is a bearish harami. Incidentally, that bearish harami printed at all time highs. So to look left on your chart, there was no support or resistance. So the only clue that you are getting that there's a potential reversal at this all time high was the formation of that daily candle pattern. You can see after that harami, the market dropped. Then the market then sold off very heavily. Here we have a bearish engulfing, and here you see a good example of an evening star. A look at one more chart, the DAX. There we have a tweezer top. You'll note here that the bodies are slightly different lengths. The key here is, is we've printed a high more or less at the same level. So the market's pushed up, closed on its high of the day, the next day is opened, pushed back down again. Another example of a tweezer top on the far right. There we have a bearish harami. Here we have a good example of a pin bar. So, in summary, the candlestick chart give the trader clues to a market's sentiment, i.e. are buyers or sellers driving the market, momentum, how strongly the market is moving in any particular direction. They also help to confirm support and resistance levels. This can be points of inflection, i.e. a point where the market turns or a turning point in the market, not necessarily at a strong support and resistance level, but maybe the start of a new level of support and resistance, or confirming prior points of inflection into new levels of support and resistance. A candlestick is only valid when it's completely formed. 